today, so hopefully I can I can do the distance to just fall asleep at some point. See, Elegant was busy saving the world yesterday. I told you, <laughs> yeah. I told you guys. That's why he wasn't here. <laughs> I, I was indeed saving the world. Doing the standard world saving. Yeah, that's what happened. All right, well we've got another series lined up. This is going to be the third, fourth place match. Uh, for which is important. Which is important. Indeed, this is actually the match that decides who qualifies. Because remember, the top three players qualify from each qualifier. So. Whoever wins this goes into the tournament, whoever loses is out. And so I believe we're going to be looking at Wallace again then, in fact, since he did lose the last match, which was the semifinals. Mm. And I don't know whose opponent will be, though. I guess we shall see. Let's find out. Let's do this, Mr. Sale. All right. So once again, guys, we're not just going to, we're not going to be casting every game. We're basically just being given um, the more interesting games to cast as decided by our referees um, since it is the qualifiers we're just kind of randomly picking uh, think of it think of it like when it was the MSL qualifiers you know when you got those funny shows where you just dip into different games think of it, exactly, think of exactly. a bit like that kind of thing we just get the, the cream of the crop and excellent the rush. excellent comparison elegant and so thank you thank of course you. once we get to the tournament proper um, once we get to the bracket, at least, we'll definitely cast every game. I don't actually know exactly how the group stage, uh, the round robin stage works yet, um, considering basically it's over two weeks and it sort of depends on when the players can actually play the games. But uh, yeah, we'll figure something out. It'll be good. Anyway, who, who's the Terran here? Paddy Dranka. All right. I feel like I recognize that name. Has he placed well in anything? Yet? Oh, apparently this is TTF. Oh, is it? Okay. Ah. There you go then. TTF, being a boss. Um, TTF, of course, is uh, is a fairly old school player um, and is fairly kind of well known in the community. Very good Terry. <laughs> Whoa, my God. What was that man that, that Well, that guy was clearly speeding home because he was late for the uh, open heat cast. <laughs> like he was, he's trying to catch the cast and he's you know, like, oh my God, I gotta get home for this. I'm missing so many games. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> Little does he know how few favors he's doing. I might have to shut my windows at some point. It's just, you know, I'm having children. I'm having I'm having people causing disturbances. I'm see, having motorbike. See, oh, I, that's why I turned off my fan. I closed my windows. I got to sacrifice myself for the greater good here. Got to do it elegant. Can't imagine how hot you are. It's the cast of sacrifice. It's really <laughs> hot. It's horrible. Oh god, but I might actually have to do that. Um, so yeah, sorry. As I was saying. Honey Drunker, TTF, cool Terran, cool foreign Terran, hopefully he does well because we need Terran influence. Um, Wallace Bag though, he's off. He's quite a regular fixture now, isn't he? We see quite a lot of Wallace in various competitions. Yeah, we see quite a lot of bags too. I mean, you know... Many Bruder, bags! Bruder seems to be pretty popular in the nation of bags. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course, for those of you who don't know, uh, BG does stand for Bulgaria. It's their uh, nation tag. <laughs> um, it just became very interesting because we had a lovely player known as Jim BG, uh, affectionately called <laughs> oh. Jim Bag, <laughs> who played some pretty funny games in the TLS. He so, was epic. yes, <laughs> shout out to Jim Bag, wherever he is. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Jim Bag for a while. Actually. I haven't I know either. Country. We should do like a "Where are they now?" kind of thing, <laughs> and just track down classic characters. Actually, where's Jumper? I thought he was going to play in this. Dude, he commented on the thread. Oh, did he? He's gonna, he's gonna win it. I is don't he know. playing? I don't think so, but he'll still win. <laughs> it's fine. This is like when people say, "Oh, if I win the lottery, you just don't buy a lottery ticket." Yep. I mean, it's roughly the same odds. But oh, yeah, we got something on. cheesy. We got something cheesy, elegant. So we have. This is definitely a proxy reaver right here. Oh, and the fake range. We have the fake it. range. I love it. For anyone who doesn't know, the fake range, you make uh, you make air, plus one air weapons at your cybernetics core. Um, just so it looks like so you've got the cybernetics core spinning, it's actually slightly cheaper than, than Dragoon Rage, so you can get that robo at slightly less of a delayed timing, uh, whilst keeping your opponent completely in the dark about what you're actually doing. So he needs to flush out the, the SUV as quickly as possible. Um, but he is just going to have to throw down the robo now. Uh, that's a slight timing loss, um, but he really needs to get on with that. There you go, there goes the robo. Um, and now Proxy Robo is one of those things where you really need to have practiced kind of all the possible scenarios because otherwise it's so easy to, to get caught out um, well, by, by something simple. This scenario happens to be two fact, so... Yeah, this is, one, <laughs> this is one of those times when you really need to know, you really need to have a plan A um, of how to deal with it. Um, because this is a rough situation, let me tell you. 
This is quite interesting, because as far as I know, TTF really specializes in TBZ. I believe he's played a couple of show matches against really strong Zergs. I don't know how his TVP is. I mean, that's kind of standard for most Terrans, right? Really good TBZ, not so good TVP. Um, yeah. So, you know, that could partially explain why he's gone for the two-fact. Also, the fact that you can do this really easy barracks block to stop a probe getting in, so you can do it completely unscouted, is yep. quite nice. But, uh, yeah. oh, one thing that could happen is not only a proxy weaver, but he could actually elevate her into the main. It's quite easy if he sends his goons down here to elevate her in, but it looks like he's just going to send them to the front. The, tr the trouble is, the chances are, um, when you do this kind of thing, is that you die quite quickly, but, uh, kind of just to the Terran doing this kind of thing. Oh, but he might be able to catch that Vulture, which is pretty good if he can get that before he gets any mines down. Uh, he is giving chase, and he will be able to get it. Um, that that is quite that's quite annoying for for TTF right here. So Wallace is going to be able to grab that. We do have an SCV making its way over to uh, to Wallace's main base just to see what's up, but it's not going to not going to do anything decisive. Not going to get any real scouting information. Uh, and and taking down that Vulture is actually is pretty good stuff right now for Wallace. He needs every little bit of help that he can get. Meanwhile, his Reaver is started building, and it kind of comes to a crunch point where you where you have to make the choice to take the Reaver home and to defend, or to leave it out and try and kill as many SCVs as possible. Uh, this is really weird. He's gone two fact expand. Like this isn't even an all in. I don't really understand what this build is. I mean, looking at the units he has here, it's essentially like an FD with an extra vulture. So I don't know yeah. what the point of building the second factory was. Oh no, he's gonna catch a dragoon. Remember, the goons don't have range yet. Range oh. is not yet finished. It's only halfway done here, so this is really problematic. Yeah, this is this is very very awkward for defending. We might have a good mind here. It does go off, and he does manage to catch. Um, the, a couple of, oh my god, he almost ran into that mine. He does manage to catch one or two marines on the retreats as well. So this two-fact isn't too strong. He should be able to defend this. He needs to get out there and try and cut down on the marine count. Oh, losing a dragoon for free. I don't think he knows quite where the mines are. He can get that tank though, and that's a big deal. If he can get that tank before Siege Tank finishes, and he does do so, losing another dragoon, but it's definitely worth it for the Siege Tank. And now in comes the Reaver into the main base as well. Will he get any good scarabs off? He needs to drop it down, otherwise nothing gonna happen. Floating on out again. Oh, he's going after the tank. It does only take two Reaper shots to kill a siege tank and one to kill a Vulture. Unless um, the Vulture's <laughs> running in the opposite direction. That's one of the fun quirks. So Scarab, oh, he could get oh. a Scarab buff. Oh, just missing the SCV stack. This isn't going quite as well as it should be going for, for poor old Wallace. Fortunately, he has managed to hold on to his natural expansion, so nothing catastrophic happening in the meantime. And uh, he's going to go back into the main now. He could get a really nice Scarab shot up here. Every single SCV is right He's going to drop on the mine, though. He's going to drop on the mine. No, 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 he's, no he's not. not. He's not going to drop at all. What is up with Reavers today? Uh, Plenty drunk, sorry, TTF, sieging up. He can tank one siege tank hit if so wishes. Will he get a scarab off? He gets right. a tank at least. Not bad. And he's going to start picking up SCVs now as well. Well, I thought that tank was being repaired, so it was like, oh, nice shot. So four SCVs so far. Oh. Uh, and he might actually get the second tank. Can he get the second tank? Oh, it oh, looks man, like he may huge. well do. The tank is just running away. There is a mine there. Will he be able to get on the SCV stack as well? He needs to pick up that Reaver. Oh! Nice scarab. This is actually going really, really well at this point um, for, for Wallace. He can't drop that Reaver down. Oh, maybe he can. He's going to get that tank. Oh, as well. He should drop on this one. Oh, no, it's too late. Oh, no, but he can drop on the SCVs. I don't think <laughs> the tank was on siege, maybe. He does He does choose to take the Reaver out, but he's done some good damage there. He should have a second Reaver. Yeah, there we go. Second Reaver popping out now, too. Wallace getting into a nice, <laughs> nice position, quite surprisingly, after after facing down a two-fac. And doing not great sort of initial first first wave damage with his Reaver. He does not have two Reavers, so he can continue to take on Siege Shanks in the main base. And he might do just that. He needs to not drop on this mine, though. And he's looking suspiciously like he's going to do that any moment. See, all he... And, and the thing is, even if there's a Siege Shank, he can just drop the, uh, the uh, full health Reaver first to tank the first shot. And then both Reavers, if they both shoot, they'll just one-shot a Siege Shank. So it's very, very dangerous. And is there still no Engineering Bay? No, it's an engineering bay. Oh, we have a dragoon coming in. Here's a tank damage from the siege tank. And these reavers, <clears> oh, not quite getting any scarabs off. I thought he was going to lose one reaver there. Of course, uh, vultures are pretty good against reavers. Uh, they do they do a good amount of damage. But this could be a really nice attack for Wallace. He's going to get in there right onto this siege tank. And I think that's, no, he does have one more siege tank in the main. But that's busted Wallace right into, oh, he drops too close and loses a reaver for free. That is unfortunate stuff. And he's now trying to push all the way into the main. I don't know if this is wise. He needs to get that dragoon out there. He can take and hold the natural though, and that would be the best thing to do at this point. Yeah, that was uh, quite interesting. I, I wasn't sure if that Reaver actually was in the minimum range of the Siege Tank. It looks like it might have just died to the splash, but anyway, continuing to pressure this front. I'm a little bit surprised there's actually no Observer here, considering he's got a Robo right here. You know, you can just make an Observer, and you won't have yeah. to suicide all the goons all the time. 
Um, but hey, whatever works. Man, but look at this. There's actually a mine like next to this tank in the mineral in the mineral line. If he just drops a zealot or a goon directly oh. on that, he could just blow everything up. That'd be nice. I would enjoy that very much. It looks oh, like he's going to continue oh. with the natural. He can drop the reaver down now without any fear from any mines. He could get the SCV stack. I think he should get the SCV stack right now. Oh, that was right for picking. Uh, he can now come in with those two reinforcing goons. He needs to try and keep the pressure and not to land on that mine. It's looking so dangerous. Indeed it is. More Dragoons are coming out from oh. Wallace. He's doing the mine drag. He's going to try and drag it. Oh, if he can drag that one into the SCVs. No, he's going into the main. What? <laughs> I think he thought there were going to be more mines. I think he thought there were going to be more mines. He's, he's had such great opportunities right here to get some really nice SCV stacks. He hasn't quite managed to do so. Uh, and at this point, he's starting to get a bit expensive in terms of his Dragoon count because once that natural expansion comes up for, for TTF, then he's going to be able to start macroing pretty fast. He does have two Reavers going back into the main base, though. What's he going to do? He's going to have to drop next He's going to drop on the stack. mine! He's going to oh. drop on the mine! Oh! Oh, and that was a quick shot from that Reaver. I've never seen a Reaver shoot so fast. Never in my life. He's going to lose that Reaver, though. God, that needed to not happen, but it happened. Both the Reavers going down right there. I don't think that was cost effective. That was not at all, man. Slightly unfortunate. If he, if he just dropped the reverse slightly inside of it, he could have blown up so many more SCVs. Uh, but obviously, he didn't know that mine was there. He does finally have an observatory, I think. Yeah, he does. So he can start making observers. Uh, in the meantime, he has got his third base going as well. So it looks like he's still in a decent position. 74 supply against 47. Mm, but yeah. I think now... Well, now that there's an engineering bay, finally, we can have some turrets. Uh, Took a while. TTF should be able to hold off this shuttle. Mm. He should really build a turret behind this cliff, behind his natural though. He needs some vision there. Yeah, that's quite important actually because the um the barrack actually isn't doing isn't doing much mm. in that regard. He's the barracks giving him vision over the high ground, so the shuttle can't just kind of fly around uh, completely freely there. But yeah, there you go. It's the the barracks giving him some vision over that cliff now as well. So that that's definitely a good shout from TTF. He's got an SCV going over to his third base location as well. I wouldn't imagine that that's a real sign of intent. I think he's just scouting and make sure he knows what's happening. And a vulture harass going over to to Wallace's third base, but very sensibly he's walled them out. However, it looks like the vultures might be able to make their way through into his main right now. And that could be really annoying if they've got any mines. They do have mines in them. Only one, but he needs to not lose any process. Okay, he's going to be fine. Um, not too catastrophic there for Wallace. It looks like the Zells are getting really confused though. They can't figure out how to go in the back and kill these vultures. But there we go, finally taking care of that. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like the shuttle is just chilling still. The 6 o'clock, no additional Reavers on the way. I'm sure TTF will be quite happy about that. Meanwhile, he's got a third command center now, going to get ready to float that over to the 9 o'clock. So taking that off just the two factories here, going to try and just play defensive. Maybe, uh, I mean, the thing is, you can actually, even though the third base is kind of like poking out here, the entrance, you can basically just uh, put tanks on the high ground here, and it also helps to defend your natural. So actually, taking the third on this map in TVP is really quite nice. Well, however, though, Wallace did go for the interesting aggressive move, getting speed lots instead of taking up to Arbiter. So that does mean he has a good number of zealots with speed um, in order to really tank damage and get in there amongst the tanks. So I think this is going to be... Um it's going to be really difficult for, for TTF to make any actual progress um, out to defend his own third base because with those speed lots in play, oh, but I don't know if this is a good idea. Wallace actually going right into the natural, leading with Dragoons. <laughs> this is just, this is not very good at all. He's going to lose so many of his units, and that is is TTF's ticket back into the game at this point um, because Wallace just binned all his stuff. Classic um, Protoss, classic Protoss. <laughs> Here, let me just run into your tank line. Nope. But Wallace did so much stuff right up until that very point. He was in a good position. Oh, God. Yeah. It's another guy who's late for the uh, the cast. <laughs> Don't worry, Elegant. It's actually the same guy. He's just going backwards and forwards. I know. He, he, he was so anxious to get home, he forgot where his house was. He's just driving <laughs> in circles. He's like, help. I need to listen to the cast. He might actually just be like listening in outside your window. He's just driving past <laughs> the window, just catching glimpses of what's going on glimpses of greatness. I think that's probably what's happening, you know. Um, but TTF is going to be able to use his opportunity to get there uh, and get to his third base. But you see how thin his line is now. If if Wallace hadn't done that stupid attack, TTF would only be two or three tanks up on what he is now. And uh, Wallace would have a, a pretty sizable army with which to come down on this. And he'd be able to, I think he'd be able to destroy this attempt at the third base, to be honest, because Wallace, Wallace's daring move to, to get speed instead of getting earlier Arbiter tech would have really paid off right there and I'm surprised that that wasn't why he did this. Yeah, I, maybe he just felt like he was really far ahead from the Reaver and wanted to just end the game, but 
Clearly, that was not possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. And he's clearly not happy about it. <laughs> so he's got some relationship issues that work out here. Yeah. To be fair, to be fair, I think that's every Protoss' sentiment about Terran, though. Just yeah. I hate you. And Terrans are always moaning as well, just to, just to have her at home. They're mm -hmm. always complaining, man. Bunch of whiners. Yes. I mean, the yes, thing is, are. like, cause, if you think about it, right? Like, Brudor naturally favors Terran because every map is Terran favored. So, you know, <laughs> why? what do they even have to complain about, right? Like, every map is good for them. Also, they've got siege tanks and mines. Yeah. How could they not be the strongest race? Seriously. It's a no-brainer. It's an absolute no-brainer. Right. And um, trying a little bit of Vulture Harass right there, but that gets pretty easily shut down. All those Vultures are going to go down. There hasn't really been any significant Vulture Harass for TTFs about this game. He's never really had the extra stuff to kind of throw around. So that means that Wallace has been fairly undisturbed up until this point. So his probe count is really, really Whoa. His late game macro should, should. Oh. Elegant, your voice just went completely. Your voice just went completely robotic. <laughs> Did it? Oh my god, that was crazy. That was like r robot elegant. <laughs> what the hell? Terminator elegant. Oh god. I gotta listen back to that. Is it, is <laughs> it cool awesome. or weird? Both. Both. That was very scary. <laughs> See that? That's that's Elegant's real voice that he uses while saving the world. It's like the Terminator voice. Yeah. He terminates all the bad you, guys. Man. So you don't know it's me. <laughs> oh man, what's going on? Oh yeah, I was gonna say, is this Nexus at the bottom right one hex too far up, or is that correct? I'm not really sure. Uh, no, I think that's is right. That, is that correct? I think it looks a bit weird enough. Actually, yeah. maybe it's one hex too far. I'm not sure. It's hard Similarly, to actually, wait a minute. Is the three o'clock Nexus too low? Because look at this. There's a slight delay when the pro the that's pros definitely are not... too low. Yeah, definitely this low. one is definitely too low. Okay, I'm not sure about the bottom right. He's done that. He's done that twice now. He did that uh, in one of his games against KYCT as well. Weird. Very weird. Interestingly, uh, the Terran also now going for the top left base instead of the six o'clock. The six o'clock. The thing is, even though the six o'clock requires you to kind of like walk around the middle and be slightly exposed, because it's a ramped base, you can just wall it in and put tanks on top, and it's like impossible for Protoss to break. Whereas the top left base is actually slightly easier to attack into. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's actually true. Um, and it looks like, yeah, TTF just throwing down the command center in the top left-hand corner. Um, do we have the speed upgrade for observers? We do have a speed upgrade for observers from Wallace. Always a good idea. So he's going to be able to stay one step ahead uh, of the, the spider mines, and yeah, no way for TTF. Oh my god, mines. Dr. Finger just pointed out that Wallace's natural nexus is too far from the gas as well. What? <laughs> what? Are you what kidding me? <laughs> Every nexus is mining at negative efficiency. What the hell? <laughs> that that is, e every single one, except his main. Could you imagine? We but just need. We just, a free I know, we just need to kill him to kill his main nexus and reposition. He's like, no, no, no. This is too close to the gas. I need to. I need to move this over. But it literally tells you <laughs> where to build your nexus. You can just kind of shift it around, see what works for you, but that's just ridiculous. Maybe that's why he went for speed blocks first, because he just literally didn't have enough gas, and he's yeah. got so few gates now as well. He this actually has no gas blue. right now. Like, like yeah. he hasn't built any Templars, he hasn't built any Arbiters, and he has no gas. <laughs> <laughs> this is stupid. Uh, he needs he needs a lot more gateways kind of right away. He's he's maxed now. He needs he needs those gates to be up and running. He's got them so spread out too. I don't know how on earth he's meant to be able to macro out of this. Finally, he's got a nice kind of battery of gates going up in, in the top left corner of his base. Wow, that is a lot of gates. It's That's a lot so of gateways. Money. Yeah, he's got a huge amount of money, hasn't he? He's just absolutely stacked right now. He's getting another base up at 12 o'clock as well. Wallace um, should be well on top of this. It's going to be kind of a one. A one big push kind of situation for TTF where he's going to need to do really good stuff with one push to get himself some map position and uh, and buy himself some time so he can get another base up and running. Otherwise, it's uh, just going to be way too hard for him to do this. But it may be too late for that already because while it's just so rich and has so many gateways and bases, he has to be careful though because uh, going to to the super late game in PVT on a two-player map, I always am very worried about, especially on a map like this with all these ridges where it's easy for Terran to to set up an unbreakable position. Because it's not like a four-player map where you can take another main and have like a second source of infinite gateways. Like there's actually not that much space on this map to add your second gateway farm. Yeah. So that's why he's adding everything in his main right now, as you can see. Which means it actually could end up being like, if he loses one huge engagement dramatically, the game could just instantly end. 
um, because he doesn't have that extra reinforcement slash flanking supply of units. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. You can have all the resources in the world, but if, if you can't build enough units with them, then, then there's absolutely no help. And oh, these Vultures can go into that position, trying to get in for the probe harass, but not doing too much. That drop kind of falls a little bit flat, and uh, was able to clean it up easily with literally his entire army coming down like a sledgehammer on top of on top of the the Terran stuff. I'm going to pull right out of there now. And yeah, he just basically needs to stay on top of the scouts and make sure that no weird army movement goes on from the TTF and he should be able to catch him on a good ridge. Indeed, indeed. I wish uh, I wish he'd add another Stargate though. Yeah, one I wish that too. Oh wait, actually wait. Oh no, there's only one Stargate. I thought I saw a second one. Okay, never mind. Um, he's, take, he's got the 12 now though. Going to take down some vultures that are trying to go for this. There are so many siege tanks in TTF's composition though. Look at this, it's like entirely siege tanks. This is that, really, really scary. That's the A-move composition <laughs> for Terran. If you're gonna try a big A-move, this has to do it. Siege tanks, Goliaths, a few vultures in there, but you know, who needs them? Because zealots really aren't that good if you're not gonna siege up. Um, so maybe that's what TTF's going for. Oh, we're gonna have a recall. Up. Oh, so we We're are going to have a recall right. along the six. It's going to be in the main. Fortunately for TTF, though, his army is not that far away. The problem is he's going to have to go back through this really narrow choke that's also kind of blocked by his factories. So he's going to be really obnoxious to try and get his uh, his dudes back into his base. Here we go. Arbiter's waiting. He's clumping up his units. He's clumping up the dudes. The goons freaking out. <laughs> as, as usual. And they're just going somewhere else. What is he doing? He's not even doing the recall. He's just whisked out. Yeah, what, what happened? He suddenly, he suddenly got cold feet because he thought he was going to be attacked. But actually, that's not even a big deal in this kind of situation. But he's got on top of the ridge and he might be able to get a really nice engagement position. Uh... The TTF sieging up the big tank army. That is a huge siege tank army. He should be able to oh melt my God. the line of zealots. Oh my good goddamn nice mine going off right there, taking out a few siege tanks. He's still got plenty left in the back. Wallace is just going in. I don't know if this is the best idea. He's very, very persistent in this game. He loves the A move, and he does do really, really nice damage uh, to that tank heavy composition. He's just able to re macro. TTF's got to keep trying, but uh, Wallace should be able to reproduce that army so quickly. He, he could have more gates at this point, and he could have them less ridiculously spread out, so that macro would be a bit easier, but he is going to be able to re macro nice and quickly. TTF just needs to get another base. He needs another base somewhere. Somehow, a fourth base would really, really help him in this situation. Top left hand corner is nearly done. Can he hold? Ah, I've just discovered that the reason he didn't recall is because he didn't have it researched. <laughs> He's no. researching it now. Oh, no. he forgot. But yeah, that, that fight was really strange. So the tank sieged really late. He was on the low ground. He didn't have any mines in position. So the position was really good for Protoss. Of course, since the Terran army though was ridiculously strong, it still sort of came out on top. Yeah. But as you say, so much easier for the Protoss to reproduce, especially with such a huge bank. He's back up at 184 supply, 142 for the Terran. But here we go, this bottom right base actually might fall. Looks like we're just going to have a counterattack to the top left here. Base for base, base trade. That's okay uh, for, well, it's sort of okay for both players. Um, although what this means is that with the Terran army position in the bottom right, the Terran can actually now take the 6 o'clock base instead. You can just uh, make another command center. I'm surprised he doesn't actually already have another command center to float over there, but the 6 o'clock should be much easier to take. I'm actually, that's, this is why I was saying earlier that this top left, it's, it's weird that he's taking the top left base instead of that 6. Yeah, but, but I don't think there's, I don't think there's any way for him to deal with Wallace's armor right here. He's got his whole army down on the bottom right hand corner, but it's looking tiny compared to Wallace's once again maxed out army. Wallace didn't have the bank that I thought he could have by this time. He could have had more, but I think this maxed out army is going to be enough as long as he uses it well um, to do some really decisive stuff because I, I just don't think the TTF can rebuild fast enough. Indeed, especially without an extra expansion. He's getting very, very low. He's down to only his uh, third base here, which actually, for some reason, doesn't have that many SCVs. Uh, looks like, oh, he's got a bunch of his natural, but here we go. Looks like the Terran army is coming back, although not all of... No, wait. Wow, yeah, he doesn't have as many units as I thought. Yeah, he's only on 140 supply. Uh, he doesn't even have an upgrade advantage. 2-1 against 2-1-2. Usually, Terrans are at an upgrade advantage, but he is not. And looks like, oh, yeah. no, he's out of position. The siege is late. There's no mines. Oh, this could be very, very bad. The Zelts are running in. There's a D-Matrix, but I don't know if it matters. The Zelts are engaging with the siege tanks. There's a stasis on the back line. Oh, is this no. going to be it? There's so many goons and not enough tanks. Oh, no, no, no. That is such a lot of goons left. Well, it's going to be able to push all the way in. It doesn't matter if it takes mine hits even. Oh, a few of these Dragoon's getting caught there over on the right hand side. There's some surprise siege tanks still remaining, but he still has such a big Dragoon army coming in. TTF natural. TTF trying to hold one lone siege tank, making its last stand, but that goes down pretty quickly. The siege tanks on the right, somehow holding on, but GG! GG! Go FS!
There you have it, folks. We go on into game two. Wallace taking game one of TTF. That is a bit surprising to me. That is quite interesting. I, I don't know if uh, that's just PVT. Is that just the map? Is that Wallace being a boss with a proxy reaver? Who I knows? I, I, think, I think we have to call, call that one a success with proxy reaver. That proxy reaver was good. It did a lot of damage. Could have done more, but it, it, it was actually quite decisive in the early game. It was pretty good indeed. Pretty good indeed. I would have loved it if you got a big SCV stack though, because when the SCVs went back into the natural, they all stacked up and just gone boom and killed every SCV at once. That would have made me a happy, happy man. I, I probably would have missed it with the alting though, so we wouldn't have seen it anyway. So <laughs> I would have like, seen it. I would have you, seen it. You would have seen it. We can just pretend it happened, guys. Just pretend it happened that I missed it. Yeah, and the game actually ended 20 minutes ago. <laughs> exactly. And a big explosion. It's, it's all a lie. It's all a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Sales replay just broke and it's been going crazy. Like 20 minutes. All right, uh, next game is going to be on FS. This is, of course, a semi-final. No, this is the third, fourth place match.